Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today I want to look at hand planes and I want to look at the cheapest of the cheap to the most expensive and go actually through them all and see what do you need when you are picking out your hand plane? Is one better than another? Let's dive in and take a look. So here I have four hand planes that are basically four different classes of hand plane. This one is the number 33 you can get from Harbor Freight. It's like 15 bucks. It's dirt cheap. Um, is it worth it? Then we have the Stanley number four. This is the classic and this is the user model and it is, it's a great old plane. Um, but is it any better than that? And then here I have the Tay Tools number four. And so this is a new plane you can buy brand new, but it's supposed to be a little bit better quality. and uh, be a little bit easier to use. And then I have the high-end hand plane. This is a Veritas custom hand plane. You can also get high-end ones from Lee Nielsen and others like that. Uh, but I want to actually go through these and see what are the differences and at what price point does it make sense for you. So first of all, we have the cheapo. And now you're going to get this from Harbor Freight. This is the their number 33. Uh, depth adjusters are here on the side. Lateral adjuster is just moving one more than the other. There really isn't much to it. You can't move the frog back and forth. So the size of the mouth is the size of the mouth. And in this case, it's really big. So this could be turned into a scrub plane. The handle is incredibly uncomfortable. It's much smaller than it should be, and it's very boxy. It's much thinner than it should be. The, the front knob is okay, um, but you know it, it's basic and it's cheap. And what do you expect for 15 bucks? Now, this is actually fairly common for a lot of the big box stores. Some of them you will still see with a lever cap on top and a standard adjustments, uh, but a lot of them will come like this. And most anytime you buy a hand plane for under 50 bucks, uh, it's going to have some issues. So let's look at some of the specifics. Here you can see this is the frog or where the bed, where the iron sits on here, and it's just sitting on these three points. If you compare that with the Stanley, you have this whole bed surface that the iron will rest on, and that's going to give you a much better connection and less vibration. For a small one like this, where you just have these three little points, uh, you're going to be running into some vibration issues. Number two, with a small frog, you're also going to be running into keeping it in the right place. This is going to want to move around and it's going to change its adjustment on you quite regularly. Next up, most people are going to think about the sole. And for, you know, average plane use, the, the sole flatness isn't incredibly important. If you're working on a detailed smoother or if you're working on a jointing plane, then you're going to want this to be really perfect. But for a general everyday use, number four, the sole doesn't have to be perfect. And in this case, you're probably going to want to spend some time lapping and flattening it because these aren't to the highest quality, but for most uses, they'll be okay to get going with. Some people really like this dual screw adjustment, some people really don't. It's kind of a personal preference and it will work in the end. But the big thing for me is comfort. This is just, it, it just feels bad. There's sharp edges on here, the paint job on it is poor, the handle is tiny, it's thin, it's just really, really uncomfortable to grab. Unless I had hands that were tiny, this would just be a painful plane to use. It would not be an enjoyable experience. And for me, with hand tools, enjoyment is the name of the game. So in the end, if you get one of these, expect to spend yeah four or five hours tuning it up, cleaning it up, and getting it really up and going. And then expect to regularly be readjusting it because this will not hold its adjustment. It's also going to be less enjoyable to use. So, you know, if you're really getting into hand tools just at the beginning and you don't have much money at all, you might want to get a big box store plane or something cheap like this. But in most cases, I generally suggest getting an antique plane. So let's actually start looking at this. Now with an antique plane, you have to know a lot more in order to get a decent one. You can't really tell by the company on it because every company made good ones and every company made bad ones. Um, Stanley were the na top name brand for a long time, but then after World War II, the quality started to go down hill and you get less and less quality. Some of them have other features like the frog adjustment screw or other little things that make them easier. And, and there's so many different Stanley hand planes made over the years, it's hard to tell which one is which. I did a video a while ago actually looking at what you want to look for when buying an antique hand plane. So rather than going into all that, I'm going to leave a link to that video down below and up in the cards. Uh, so it's one of these things that if you're looking at getting an antique hand plane, you're going to have to do some research. And most chance... And often you're going to find yourself buying a boat anchor every now and then. And until you know what you're really looking for, you're probably going to end up buying one or two boat anchors. But for the price that you can get an old antique hand plane that needs to be restored, it might be worth it. Just as one of the big box planes you can get for $20 or less, 
you can go out and buy an antique plane that is going to require around 20 bucks or so. Uh, most of mine I buy for around 20 to 25 dollars. Unless I'm getting into one of the large jointer planes, that's pretty common price to buy one that needs a lot of restoring. And time-wise, I'm going to spend just about as much time I am on the, the store-bought one as I am on an antique one and getting them up and running. They both are going to require a good bit of work. The difference is, this one doesn't have a lot of comfort to it, and this one doesn't have a lot of quality to it. But if you restore one of these, these are incredibly comfortable. They're very, very nice to hold, and they have a ton of quality, and they're a tried and true design. A lot of people are going to want to upgrade to a better iron. Most of mine I keep with the original Stanley iron, but I have been playing with a few that are the newer, higher quality blades to see if I like them. And in most cases, yes, there's a little bit less vibration with these, but even the old antique irons will work perfectly fine. So if you go with a new big box store cheap plane where you go with an antique, you're probably going to spend about the same amount of time tuning them up and getting them running. You're probably going to spend about the same amount of price between them. But this one's going to be far more comfortable, far more enjoyable to use, less vibration, and just all around a better hand plane. And so that's why most of the time I tell people, don't even look at the big box store planes. They aren't worth it. They're not great quality, they aren't comfortable, and you're going to spend just as much time and money on restoring an antique. And that's why I'm going to tell most people, if you don't have much money, go get an antique and restore it. Plus, you're going to learn the plane, you're going to learn how it works, and you're going to learn what you like and don't like about it. So let's say, you know, money isn't quite as big of an issue, and getting down to the lowest price budget isn't as important. You may think about then going up to a new hand plane. And there is a whole class of these mid-quality hand planes that have recently been coming out. This is one from Tay Tools, but it's a pretty good example of a lot of them out there. It comes with a little bit thicker iron. It comes with a very, very thick casting. This is a nice heavy-duty plane. This will not have a lot of vibration. It has a really nice, comfortable tote. It feels good in the hand. It has all the adjustability you expect with the frog adjustment screw, the depth adjustment. It's, it's an all-around nice plane, and this is going to come pretty much ready to use. Sharpen the iron and go to town on it. It's not going to take that much work. You're going to spend a little bit more. This one's about 80 bucks, and most in this range are around the $100 range for a number Number four. This particular one has a screw style lever cap, which I actually kind of like. With an old style lever, it might be a little bit easier to function, but setting the tension on it is a little more difficult. Whereas with this, every time I put it on there, I can specify exactly how much tension I want. How easy do I want the iron to move? If I'm working in some difficult wood and I want this iron to stay exactly where it is, I can really crank this down. If I know I'm going to be just adjusting it back and forth, I can lessen it up a little bit. It has a really decent frog, just like you would see in a Stanley. It's got a lot of contact surface all the way up and down. This is the type of hand plane that if you take care of it and treat it well, this will last you your entire life and you can hand it down to one of your kids. You can set this plane up to do any smoothing or detail work you want, and it is a really nice, comfortable plane that will treat you well. And it is a really nice, comfortable plane that will treat you well at a quarter of the price of a high-end hand plane. There are a few hand planes that have fallen into this category. You have the Tay Tools, which I like, and out of them that I've found, this is the one I generally suggest. Um, I find its price per quality to be the best balance. You have the new Stanley Sweethearts. You have the Wood River, and you have a whole bunch of other ones that have fallen into this class of around $100 for a number four. If you want to go down a step, you can go to like the Grizzlies. I've heard some good, I've heard some bad, um, and you kind of get a 50-50 on whether or not you're going to get a, a good plane out of that, but they're a little bit cheaper than this even there. One of the things to look for is you want a tote that's nice and comfortable. You want something that has a good rounded profile. Um, a lot of them, like the, the Stanleys here, have these sharp edges. They a good flat surface here and it's just not as comfortable it's not as nice um, the finish on this actually feels good in the hand this feels like I'm holding a lump of plastic so in most cases in this mid-range section those are the things you're gonna be looking for the fit and finish you want something that's going to treat you well something that's gonna feel nice but is going to last you a long time and do good work a lot of the Stanley sweethearts are fantastic on their price they will do good work. They will last you for a long time. They're just not quite as comfortable. I found them to be a little bit more, and eh, not finished. So out of all the mid-ranges I've tried, um, the Tay Tools is the one that I really like. It's a great balance price per quality. Your name is Scrooge McDuck. You've been saving for years, and you finally have the money, and you want to get something that isn't just good. You want something that's nice. And in that case, you can go up to a premium plane. Now, for a premium metal body production plane, there's basically two choices. Number one, you can get them from Veritas, or number two, you can get them from Lee Nielsen. 
I don't actually own a Lee Nielsen plane, and this is my only Veritas plane because they are incredibly expensive. But man, are they nice to play with. Now, when you look at Lee Nielsen planes, those basically take the antique designs, uh, particularly the bedrock design, and they redo it for the new world. And they are basically the same old plane, but they have a few little bells and whistles. They're really focused on being a hand plane that feels good, and man, do they feel good. They ha they're fantastic at the hand, they're fit, they're finished, they're, they're just a really, really nice plane. Veritas, on the other hand, doesn't really want to go with the antique style. They said, ah, oh, let's kind of start over and add a bunch of new whistles. And the custom hand plane is where they really took off on that. The reason it's called the custom hand plane is you can customize it. They have several different tote designs, so you can choose one that fits your hand and the style you like. They have several different knob designs, so you can choose the tall, short, squat. You can actually change the frog, so you can get a different angled frog. This one's a 55 degree. The one I have in here right now is a 45 degree. You can choose the iron you want, PMV11 or 01. A2, you can actually go through these and choose everything you want in a hand plane. And then on top of that, they've added all sorts of bells and whistles. It used to be the only time you could get an adjustable mouth was on a low angle plane, but they put an adjustable mouth on here so you can actually open and close this quickly and easily. There are threaded holes so you can mount fences to the side. There are these little set screws that keep the iron in place so it doesn't move around. This has a thicker casting up here and it gets thinner and thinner and lighter. And so most of the weight is toward the iron on this. There are just so many little things in this that they've redesigned the hand plane and made it an incredibly nice hand plane. And man, I love using this. But holy cow, is this an expensive plane. So when it all comes down to it, you have to ask yourself, how much money do you have? If you don't have much money, then you're probably going to want to get an antique or a store-bought plane. And most of the time I tell people, do not get the big box store planes, especially the ones from Harbor Freight. You're going to spend just as much money and time on them as you will on an antique plane. And this will treat you much better, it will feel much better, and will be a hand plane that will last you much longer than the store-bought cheapo planes. If you have a little bit more money, then think about upgrading to one of the mid-range ones. And really, I do love the Tay Tools um, version. This is, it's kind of the, the perfect balance between functionality and usability. It's a really, really good hand plane for the price. And around 80 bucks a piece, you will not find a better hand plane at that price point. But if you do have the money, and you've been saving up for it, and you want something really nice, Go with the Lee Nielsen or the Veritas Custom Plane. And in all honesty, money-wise, this is the one I would get. The Veritas Custom is such an incredible plane. Uh, it is, yeah, it is a joy to use. And every time I grab this, it is just pure fun in the shop. So then the question is, where exactly do you go to get them? Uh, for the big box stores, well, you go to the big box store. It's pretty simple. For the antique ones, I have an entire website dedicated to finding antique tools. Not just planes, but anything. And I have a map of every known location that I know of in the entire world where hand tools are available to buy. As well as a list of trusted online sellers. And then a list of all of the collecting organizations and clubs so that you could find if there is a club meeting around you. So if you go to handtoolfinder.com, it's one of the easiest places to find hand tools around you. If you're interested in the Tay Tools hand plane, I have a link to that down below. And I also have a link to the Veritas custom hand plane as well as all the settings I have chosen for mine. Now, if you do have any questions, thoughts, comments, snide remarks, <laughs> leave them in the comments below. I do like reading through those and I answer as many as I possibly can. I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason Wood by Right is here today. Without patrons on Patreon, members here on YouTube, that would not happen. And yes, there is a membership now here on the second channel. You can find a link to that down below. And thank you to everyone who has been joining and supporting this channel, especially right now. It means more than I can say, and we'll keep Wood by Right going for a long time to come. If you ever meet anyone who's scrolling over here on the side, say thank you. So I think that'll about do it for today, and until next time. Have a wonderful day. Well, this is plain to see. This is the very same plane that the Wright brothers invented.